Here's a video briefing for you to discuss some changes here at the National Weather Service and also to provide you with a summer outlook for the rest of 2017. This is Alex Tardy, Meteorologist, National Weather Service. Here's what the point and click forecast looks like when you click on the white map on our front page. You can change your location at the green dot towards the bottom. The current weather conditions are listed across the top. Those come from a variety of private and public agencies. That information is provided for your courtesy. It does not drive the weather forecasts as you see the weather forecast listed below. If you need more detailed information, we also have hourly weather graphs and tabular formats as shown here. All of this is obtained from the weather.gov point and click page. The observation or current conditions is the map that shows all of our available weather stations. A lot of these stations we don't own, but we do get this information shared through NOAA and displayed on this map. For those of you looking for more than just the point and click forecast, we have the digital weather.gov where you can find all your parameters for weather forecasts out to seven days on a map that you can zoom in and out of. All right, let's talk a little bit about the climate. And currently we are seeing a little bit of lingering effects of the long-term drought across Southern California, whereas most of California the drought has been completely removed. Where have we come from? Well, dramatic changes in 2016 to 17 as shown here, as the significant rain and snow that occurred has pretty much wiped out what appears to be the worst drought in modern records. Here's another look at what the drought featured over the past few years. You can see it peaked out in 2014 and 15. Prior droughts in the years 2000 are also shown here. What brought an end to the drought? This map shows you pretty clear that the precipitation that California saw in 2016 into 2017 was much above normal for most of the state. Blue shaded areas are greater than 130% of normal. So about one and a half times the normal annual precipitation. And most importantly in the mountains, it was around 200% of normal as shown here. The water supply across the state has significantly improved in 2017. This has made its way all the way down into Southern California. One of our local reservoirs, the Diamond Valley Reservoir, sitting at 88% capacity. That was as low as 36% back in 2014. Locally in San Diego County, we've finally seen some improvement too, where the overall capacity has gone from about 42% during the worst part of the drought and now holding around 60% of capacity. And the snowpack I mentioned in the mountains. You can see the snowpack this year in 2016 and 17, labeled in the blue, was much above normal but it wasn't the snowiest or deepest snowpack we've seen of all time. That was 82-83. Last year at this time we were dealing with severe dry conditions from the ongoing drought as shown here. This is a measure of how much moisture is in our fuels, specifically our dead fuels. Last year was a critical time as they were near all-time low values. Here's a look at what the accumulative impacts, despite all the rain and snow we saw in 2016 and 17, had on our forests. Across the state of California, as shown here, there are nearly 100 million trees that have died or the process of dying since 2010. And where the drought was the worst, and we have most of our trees in southern Sierra Nevada, you can see here, that was the region hardest hit. There are some impacts across Southern California as shown here as well. Now, earlier this spring, thanks to all the precipitation we had, we finally saw a snowpack in some of the Southern California mountains and we saw a significant green up, especially in our valleys 
and our deserts as shown here. However, that green up has led to excessive amount of grasses and brush and weeds. And we saw some early fire starts in spring or May 17. Most of our landscaping is now turning into a golden tone because of all that abundance of grass and weeds and brush, which was produced from the very wet winter we saw here in Southern California. This sets the stage to dangerous conditions for spread of wildfires. In fact, our current fuel conditions are drying out as shown here. They are not near the critical line, but they are below the average. You can see the rain we had in May actually caused a spike and a significant decrease to our fire weather conditions. Our wet winter, well, of course, that produced fuel conditions very wet, much above normal, as shown on the left. Now, some of our smaller fuels that respond a little quicker to, let's say, the monsoon or the marine layer, those have responded to the recent humidity. So you've noticed the humidity in our region, and we've had a few thunderstorms in the mountains, and that has helped moisten up some of our fuels, making them a little less susceptible to burning, as shown here. Recently, we've also noticed our ocean temperatures starting to warm. All the blotchy red areas, again, significantly above normal water temperatures. You can see along the San Diego and Orange County coast, just recently, snapshot here from satellite imagery shows temperatures that have warmed into the mid-70s, and that is several degrees above normal. It's not just our region, though. It's especially across the far northern Pacific and other parts of the Pacific Ocean and unrelated to El Nino activity. So a lot of this warming appears to be excessive heat in the atmosphere and land that's being absorbed in our oceans. Now it's been hot. It's been incredibly hot in some places. Across our deserts and into our mountains, we've seen temperatures running 5 to 7 degrees as shaded in dark red here above normal. That's in the past 30 days from mid-June to mid-July, which really picks up two major heat waves. It hasn't just been us in Southern California. It's been all the way up into Northern California as shown in that bright red. Now, if you want to look at it a different way, our deserts and part of our foothills have seen 20 to 30 days above 90 in that 30 day period. Pretty remarkable how warm it's been so far this summer. Now, the minimum temperatures, the low temperatures really can affect us with the uh, inability to cool at night such as our homes and the maximum temperatures are shown here as well so the maximum temperatures are all those red areas on the left hand side and then the minimum temperatures are the red areas on the right hand side and where you see those red areas is why we had those readings of six to eight degrees above normal really significant amount for comparing a 30-day temperature period our deserts have really been roasting. Take a look at the temperatures in Palm Springs from mid-June through mid-July. The temperatures have been averaging near 100 degrees. This is the average temperature. The average high temperature in the month of July running about 112 degrees. Pretty incredible numbers and we can see it's even hotter than 2006 during that 30 year period. Now, if you think you can escape the heat in the mountains, not the case. We're seeing very warm conditions. In fact, record warmth in the past 30 days. Here's a look at the 30-day mean average temperature at Big Bear. Warmer than we've seen in our records. Now, what is the outlook for the rest of the summer, August through October? And remember, in San Diego, some of our warmest temperatures occur in the late summer. The high pressure system or multiple systems that have been dominating from the Midwest all the way to the Southwest is going to be the culprit to the rest of the summer. We don't expect conditions to be warm just because it's summer. We expect them to be warmer than normal conditions or our 30 year average as this high pressure migrates back and forth from the desert Southwest and where it currently is over the plains. The monsoon. 
Monsoon brings the humidity. It also brings thunderstorms. A lot of this is welcome relief, except for the humidity uh, and the lightning that's associated with it. We expect average conditions, which means uh, we will be seeing thunderstorms August, September, but not the type of years like we saw in 2014 and 15, where we saw many days of thunderstorms. Nonetheless, again, that same high pressure system that migrates west to east, that's what drives that monsoon flow up from Mexico and Texas.